Hi, I'm Beth Pike and I'm with the Dysautonomia Project and this video is going to easily show you how to conduct an orthostatic vitals test. Dysautonomia is a general term described any disorder of the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system controls the automatic functions of your body including blood pressure, circulation, and digestion. Orthostatic vitals are helpful in confirming a dysautonomia diagnosis by demonstrating variations in blood pressure and heart rate when a patient moves from a supine to a sitting to a standing position. In healthy persons, the autonomic nervous system works to maintain homeostasis, including stable circulation of blood throughout, including the heart, lungs, and brain. When a person with dysautonomia experiences orthostatic stress, when standing up, the autonomic nervous system does not properly maintain circulation, and this is why many patients experience lightheadedness, nausea, and or syncope, among other symptoms. This is Allison, our nurse volunteer, and Jenna, our patient volunteer, and they will help us demonstrate how to perform this orthostatic stress test. The test lasts approximately 15 minutes. You'll need a blood pressure cuff, capability to measure the patient's heart rate, a clock or stopwatch, a bed or examining table that is low enough to the ground that the patient can sit on the edge of the table with their feet resting on the floor, a copy of the orthostatic vitals test form, and a quiet room. Due to the diurnal variability of hemodynamics, it's ideal to conduct this test in the morning hours but may be conducted at any time during the day. Before the test begins, it's important to explain the test procedure to the patient. Hi Jenna, how are you today? I'm good, thanks, how are you? Good. The doctor wants me to do an orthostatic vitals test on you today. This test will last for about 15 minutes and I'll be using a blood pressure cuff and a heart monitor. Um, I'll be asking you some questions during the procedure, but most of the time I'd like you to remain quiet unless I ask you a question. Are you okay with that? Yes. The goal of the first five to ten minutes of this test is to have you relaxed as much as possible. So I'm going to ask you to put your cell phone away and to lay down and get comfortable and we'll start the procedure. Okay? Okay. It's also important during the entire test that the room is comfortable and quiet so that external sounds are not distracting to the patient. The first part of the test is the resting phase. It's ideal for this time to be between five to 10 minutes. It's also helpful to encourage the patient to relax during this time to get the ideal resting heart rate. Okay, Jenna, during this phase, I'm going to take uh, your blood pressure and I'm gonna place the heart monitor. Just relax your arm. I'm gonna place the heart monitor on your finger. At the end of the resting phase, take both the heart rate and blood pressure as a baseline measure and record that information on the orthostatic vitals test form. Okay, now you're gonna feel the blood pressure squeeze your arm and I want you to just try to relax as much as possible. After recording the heart rate and blood pressure, it's also important to ask the patient how they are feeling and record any symptoms they are experiencing while at rest. How are you feeling? Fine. Okay, no dizziness, no discomfort? Nope. Okay, thank you. Next, Allison is going to explain the procedure for phase two, the sitting phase. Okay, Jenna. I'm going to ask you to sit up in just a few minutes, but I want to remind you to get your feet on the floor as much as possible. And when you're in your sitting position, try to not move, and I don't want you to put your weight on your hands. So if you could just kind of sit at the edge of the table and um, let me know how you feel. It is important to check the patient is sitting upright without leaning and with their feet placed gently on the floor. I'm going to take your blood pressure. Okay. How 
How are you feeling? Dizzy and lightheaded. Dizzy and lightheaded, okay. The recording of the patient's symptoms experienced throughout this test is as important and in some cases more important than the actual numbers. So be sure to include as much detail as you can about what the patient says. It may be helpful to record anything they say word for word in quotation marks. Before transitioning to the standing phase, it is important to caution the patient to sit down immediately if they experience symptoms of presyncope or faintness. Okay, now at this part of the test, I'm gonna have you stand up for five minutes. At any point in time, if you feel dizzy or the need that you need to sit down or lay down, please go ahead and do so because your safety is the top priority. You don't need to ask my permission, just go ahead and sit down or lay down. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to have you stand up and we're going to take your blood pressure and your heart rate. Okay, it's been one minute and I'm going to retake your blood pressure. Okay, how are you feeling? Dizzy and lightheaded. Okay. Okay, it's three minutes and I'm going to take your um, blood pressure and heart monitor. How are you feeling? Dizzy, lightheaded, with TV static over my vision. Okay. Okay, it's been five minutes. I'm going to repeat the blood pressure and the heart monitor. How are you feeling? Same as before, but with heart palpitations. Okay. I'm going to have you sit down and relax. Okay, Jenna, what a great job. We're all done. Mm -hmm. Now, do you feel like you need to lay down? Sitting is good. Okay. During the recovery phase, record the summary of findings at the end of the form. At the bottom of the form, calculate the difference in the lowest resting heart rate from the highest recorded heart rate. Place that number in the blank of the orthostatic heart rate increase. Once you have finished recording the information, you are all done. Once you've recovered, then um, I'll help you out to the front area. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too.